Hi, I'm Michelle Bastian, and I am honored today to introduce the father of the raw food movement, Mr. Victorus Kolvinskis, otherwise known as Reverend Essene Bishop Victorus Kolvinskis. And he is joining us today uh, auspiciously on his way to Lithuania to be honoring uh, Ann Wigmore, his partner in creating the Hippocrates Health Institute. So I'd like to uh, welcome you today. Victorus. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to say that my deeply held intention with this interview is that we will embrace discussing many topics in ways that are not typically addressed in our normal media avenues, including thoughts on the evolution of our species with regards to nutrition and our spirituality or divine energy system called the chakras. I myself am a certified energy therapist and interested in, uh, uh, in relating chakras, nutrition, and raising consciousness. So with my first question, uh, Reverend Victorus, I'd like to start our conversation by having you elaborate on just a few of the many predictions that you made in your groundbreaking work here of yours from over 35 years ago, survival into the 21st century. I'd love to have you share how you've seen many of your predictions unfold up to today in the most talked about year in the end of the Mayan calendar, 2012. You're asking for a major scope to explore, but Hey, anything is possible at barcode mode. <laughs> Max Planck stated that for a paradigm shift to occur, it takes approximately one generation, and it's not one in academia. Instead, the old generation dies off, and the new generation is completely familiar and immersed in it. And I witnessed two such paradigm shifts occurring. When I came into the scene with Reverend Ann Wigmore, the nuts among the berries was the reference that you might have toward anybody that was a vegetarian. Matter of fact, it was a title of Fred Steer, the head of nutrition department at Harvard who I wrestled with on Channel 7 and ended up winning in the bout because of my own academic prefer pre preparedness at Harvard Medical Library, uh, several years of it, through the bio abstracts and the clear thinking that is found within the academic community. So the first shift that occurred was the appearance of vegetarianism as a solid movement, actually more than vegetarianism, veganism, completely a plant-based diet. At the culm culmination of it, we saw the formation of www.pcrm.org, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. They have presently over 5,000 medical doctors and other professional health givers who have taken a posture based on research that a vegan diet properly chosen is not only adequate nutritionally, but anything contrary to a vegan diet is contrary to good health. That was the first major paradigm shift. And the next thing you know, people started giving some degree of respect to veganism. Then you had the next drift which I was very much involved, both in the first stages and the second stages, through endless dedication and traveling all over the country and the world, lecturing, I reveal in my most uh, prestigious work, Survival in the 21st Century, and based on both the holism that is represented in the book, by holism means integration of physical, mental, emotional, spiritual domains as being all of key importance, not only to quality of life, but longevity, freedom from degenerative diseases, and also sustainable lifestyles. So the book was classic from documentation point of view, and it continued to evolve uh, every decade. I upgraded it, making it very current so that it was not left behind, behind some of the key important issues that were evolving. The next stage came about is 
Rafuism. And this was actually pioneered of all places, but in terms of academia, once again, by the Harvard Medical School. I was fortunate enough to be on flight that particular day of Tuesday. I grabbed a hold of New York Times, which I like it for the science section. And sure enough, the leading presentation there was by Harvard on the subject of degenerative diseases. And what it was May 23rd, 2002. And in this extensive elaborate article, it showed that, first of all, everybody who is on an enzyme-less standard American diet, the SAD diet, has their bloodstream flooded with and completely metabolized, in other words, undigested protein complexes which is keeping the inflammatory condition in an ongoing non-stop inflammatory state and thus in a hyperactive immune system function and the immune is the key driving force in terms of regeneration and maintenance of body ecology. Most physicians are in agreement that if we could only jumpstart and hyperactivate the immune functions, we could overcome, not only prevent all the simple disorders such as colds, flus, headaches, but acute conditions, but even the chronic ones would be prevented. And what they stated further without making a full 100% commitment, as any good scientist would do, they used the word probably, but probably all degenerative conditions, and they listed about 30 of them, such as cancer, cardiovascular diseases, asthma, emphysema, are caused by this inflammatory condition. They didn't identify what was causing it in my book, Survival, already. 30 years prior to that, I showed how this inflammatory condition develops by subjecting protein to heat instead of the low temperature pre-digestive action of either the usage of soaking of nut seeds and also germination and also fermentation. These are the two most powerful ways of transforming seeds, grains, nuts into edible pre-digested amino acids which your body can successfully utilize without having a backup of incompletely metabolized proteins flooding your blood profile which is creating havoc from the point of view from the point of view that John Gaynor in Science News in 1972 showed that under the duress of standard American diet, what we have is creating difficulty in absorption of oxygen. They showed that heat-treated protein, when consumed, create a reduction of oxygen transport by as much as 60%. Body ad ad creates two adaptive mechanisms of removing this circulatory protein through the immune, both immune system intervention as well as also cardiovascular, which is of over 60 mile, 60,000 miles internally, storage space capacity within the bloodstream walls. So it ends up being stored in bloodstream walls causing cardiovascular disorders or it being created, according to John, the work of Dr. Otto Warburger, a Nobel Prize recipient. His major thesis, where he won the Nobel Prize, was the ultimate cause of cancer. He showed that if there's only a 30% drop in oxygen transport, it will cause 
within a 24 to 48 hour time normal cells to mutate into cancer cells and University of Wisconsin showed that these cancer cells suck up circulatory protein 20 times faster than normal cells. In other words, it's a way <coughs> of vacuum cleaning the blood profile with these cancer cells and getting into sacs of cancer cells, these circulatory proteins, which is interfering with oxygen. Why is oxygen so central in importance is the fact that under the metabolic activities in our bodies, you think multitasking, you can do three events at the same time, maybe driving a car, being on a cell phone and doing makeup and taking notes, you think that's pretty profound. The human body does not 10 events at the same time, not 10 followed by two zeros, or which would be a hundred, or by three zeros, which would be a thousand. No, it would be 10 followed by 27 zeros. That's how many events are occurring, chemical reactions in your body every second, and every one of them are oxygen dependent and enzyme dependent. These are two key driving forces. If you don't have oxygen, we see that if you zip up your mouth, close off your nose, within a matter of minute you're gasping or you could even die if someone didn't allow you to have a breath of oxygen. Well, so we need high oxygen requirements. So this situation shows why the Harvard Medical School study showed the flood of circulatory and completely metabolized protein is such a radical alteration of blood conditions and the only way you're going to have maximum oxygenation, maximum metabolism is by consuming your food in a raw state. So more and more individuals are moving toward raw frontiers. Um, that, that being said, Reverend Victorious, uh, would you say in a soaked nutshell, uh, pun intended, uh, based on all your years of work and research and observation and participation in clinical studies, is your, uh, what is your prescription in 2012 to prevent and reverse aging and disease? Uh, under eating is right at the start. We're eating too much calories, too much protein, and too much uh, fat and we're seeing morbid obesity and degenerative diseases are rampant, practically 80% of our population, that includes the children, about 40% of the children, overall average is about 80% according to World Health Organization are sick with incurable diseases. Matter of fact, we're living at a time when we anticipate that the parents will outlive their own children. That's how crisis conditions are. The whole idea is to return to more natural, first of all, whole foods, not referring to the whole food industry that we see, though it's a good resource for nutrition and quality nutrition, but what you find directly from the farmers. So if you think in terms of whole foods, white flour is not a whole food. Even when all the uh, skin and shell is there, no, you would like to be consuming the whole grain, the whole wheat, the whole rice, if you're going to be cooking it. Better yet, to get maximum nutrition. You'll germinate it, and you can prepare many different alternative foods, whether you want to, you want to, basically, nut milks, you can create, which is going to have a high protein resources, or you want to create uh, veggie burgers, or you want to create uh, man of bread or a seen bread or uh, through low temperature ovens that do not destroy the enzymes so that the whole idea is to do the following increase hydration consume less and chew more eat whole natural foods with an emphasis on green things green is so important in Ezekiel it talks about greens are for healing and we see now even in the current World Olympics, what were the superstars talking about in terms of nutrition? They were having green smoothies for breakfast, green protein smoothies for breakfast, like with spirulina, corollaro, blue-green algae, wheatgrass powders. They were having for lunch and supper 
Majority of the meal, they said, was made up of green, high, roughage foods, and then a little bit of protein, a little bit of starch. That is the new direction, the new trend. It's not only among athletes, but also among beauty queens in fashion world. On the June-July issue of Vogue, the French version, we had on the cover, Giselle Bunchkin. Uh, she is one of the star models, the top model in the world, earning somewhere in the 70 million a year. Also, a, a fantastic athlete, gymnast, uh, not only volleyball, but also karate, as well as yoga, as well as swimming, and all the other athletic, very tuned, trained athlete. Well, she was on the cover of Vogue, and Three pages were devoted to her nutritional orientation, namely raw foodism in Costa Rica. She's my neighbor, so that's how I know about it. Uh, basically, so she's setting the trend in fashion. The Hollywood is, half of the Hollywood actors are on the youthing foods instead of the aging foods. The youthing foods are reminiscent of the statement of Jesus in the same gospel of peace. He says, from life comes life, from death comes death. If you want to accelerate your aging process, you keep eating food that has no life in it, no enzymes. Everything is impossible to digest and very hard to digest. Have you noticed after eating a big old meal that you normally consume, you feel quite sleepy unless you have some alkaloids like coffee, Coca-Cola, all loaded with stimulants, or you might even go for cocaine, that God forbid, and or you'll be uh, basically uh, lighting up a cigarette. Nicotine, again, a major stimulant, lasts for a short time, and then you're crashing again. Whereas on a live food program, you need, first of all, because of maximum nutrition, you need less Secondly, you have it in pre-digested form predominantly, so it's easy on your digestion, minimal stress, and maximum nutrition. So try to emphasize those kind of foods, non-processed, so if you're going to eat instead of pasta spaghetti, even though it's made of whole grains, no, instead have legumes, have grains. That is preferred choice. So then adequate hydration. Most people are severely dehydrated. Also, probiotics. We're seeing it even one a day vitamin is advocating probiotics. They got their little pill. Instead, grow your own. Sauerkraut is so cheap and easy to make within a period of 12 hours. With proper guidance, you'll have it. You can see me on YouTube showing you exactly how to make it. It's free. So, those, hydration, exercise, as well as your attitude. If you want to live long and healthy and be from degenerative diseases, Dr. Chopra, one of the leading physicians, stated that if you want to know your likelihood of health as far as longevity and freedom from degenerative diseases, ask three questions. Are you happy with your spouse, happy with your job, happy with your life? If any one of them are no's, you are in trouble because more likely than not, if any one of those threes are nice, you know what you're going to do? Is you're going to look for an addictive escape. It might be your addiction to comfort foods, or you might be drinking, or you might be a workaholic, or couch potato, etc., etc. So basically, it's a holistic approach that I emphasize, as well as you are going to be not a happy camper on this planet Earth as long as you are not yourself. Most people have not the faintest idea who they are, what their life is all about. Your life is sacred. You came here with a special mission. And if you don't do your mission, it's just another incarnation that does not count. You either evolve, it's like going through grammar school and sleeping, and then grade school, and then high school, and you either sleep through it and are not graduated or you might be graduated without proper preparedness for the next level. In the cosmos there is no graduation unless you've done your work and that means self-realization. 
astrology, numerology, palmistry, all help. But the biggest helper is meditation and prayers. You work with them, silence still, and your true self appears within you. And it takes over, and it makes you who you are. A, a happy, healthy, holy individual. It's our natural state. Beautiful. Reverend Victorious, now I'd like to get a little provocative for a moment and actually present oh, we another... Well, of course, yes, you laid it all out for everyone, but in the course of, uh, again, uh, back to my intention of uh, mm -hmm. okay. speaking with regards to evolution, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to read a, uh, a little bit from this um, excerpt uh, from the China study, which I, I know you know very well. Um, uh, I think the book came out back in 2005 by T. Colin Campbell. And in a written debate with Campbell in 2008, Dr. Uh, Lorraine Cordain, a professor in the Department of Health and Exercise uh, Science at Colorado State University, argued that the fundamental logic underlying Collins' hypothesis that low-protein diets improve human health is untainable and inconsistent with the evolution of our own species. Now he goes on to say that there is no credible fossil, archaeological, anthropological, anatomical, ethnographic, or biochemical evidence to show that members of our Homo um, sapien species routinely consumed low-protein diets. In fact, without the inclusion of energetically dense animal food into the Homo sapien diet, starting at least 2.5 million years ago, our large energetically active brains would not have evolved. So, uh, do you perhaps feel, Reverend Victorious, that we are being called at this point in time in 2012 to a more plant-based diet as a course of evolution because of needing to combat modern diseases? Well, it's more than combat modern diseases. It's also becoming a, a star athlete. And if you are interested in overall uh, athletics, the whole athletics, first of all, I'll work on two things. Uh, which it seems to be overly emphasized, athletics and also academic or intellectual development, brain power, okay? Those are two areas that seems to be aggressively attacked. First of all, the studies that have been done by Colin Campbell showed that the more your dietary orientation is plant-based, and it was a 10-year study with over 10, 000, uh, around 10,000 individuals involved, and it was the longest with study not only in terms of duration but also the largest number of variables were being addressed practically a whole a hundred different characteristics were followed on the individuals and they found as one of the examples that the higher is the consumption of now mind you heat treated protein that's the key word heat treated protein or in other words disorganized protein the higher was the incidence of degenerative diseases this is an undesirable directive to take. Now, we can take a look at, in a classic book that I co-authored with Dr. Edward Howell, entitled, uh, entitled uh, Food Enzymes for Health and Longevity. It's got 500 medical journal documentations, okay? It should, and in it, we also looked at one culture that, in particular, that was the Eskimos, which illustrates the, the power of enzymatic nutrition in terms of prevention and somewhat of a long life. Of thought, they were living on a totally animal-based diet. However, consuming nothing but flesh foods of the slaughtered animals, because that was all there was. There was no fields of wheat, there were no apple trees or mango trees in the Laplands in the North Pole. So they lived on what was available, but they never cooked any of that stuff. Then came in and they ate the whole animal. They ate the brains, they ate the gut, they ate the liver, the kidney, which was the highest concentration of alkalinity. And they lived into their mid-90s. And they died from acidosis because metabolic waste products are extremely high in the consumption of animal protein type of a dietary orientation. Then in comes missionary explorers and they bring with them their stoves and they start introducing the North Pole individuals to the tasty and aromatic foods that they were growing, creating in the ovens, in the frying pans. Those individuals, the northerners, who adapted to that diet, they, that generation, their longevity dropped right off by over 50% into their 40s and also for the first time it was totally unknown or unheard of the ideas of cancer,
cardiovascular diseases, rheumatism, were the causes of plaguing these individuals because they were consuming such a high volume of heat-treated animal protein. And right now, the number one cause of death in the USA is cardiovascular, though some might say it's cancer, and the number two is cancer. Both of them have the enzymatic component, which you'll find in my overall dissertation. So that the idea of eating heat-treated protein, which is this particular uh, individual is advocating in a high volume, is going to push you right into collapse of your cardiovascular system. And those individuals who have compromised cardiovascular system and studies have been done by Mount Sinai Hospital, they show if your cardiovascular system is compromised, you will see on your earlobes creases. Two, three, and the deeper are the creases, the more degenerate is your condition of cardiovascular system. Other studies show that individuals who have compromised cardiovascular system, they will also have malignancy spread throughout the system. So it all depends whether you go to a cardiologist for being tested. They'll say, you've got cancer, we need to do surgery, chemo, or radiation, or you're going to go see a cardiologist. They said, we need to cut you off. Either way, it's not the solution. As President Clinton showed when he went to his cardiologist. After doing cut and paste on his system of blood vessels, they couldn't help him anymore. His daughter was very concerned that this, her daddy was not going to make it to the wedding. So, told him to lose weight. And he didn't know how to lose weight, but one of the associates of PCRM.org, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, put him on a vegan diet. We saw him just few, a week ago on national television, looking about 15, 20 years younger, healthy, vital, his brain is clear. He's a vegan. Wake up, America. It's all coming out of medical research. The medical research, the kind that you choose, there's all kind of choices available. You can have all these advocates for the consumption and for all kind of evolutionary benefit of high protein diet. So now, what is the value? I've taken as an example, and he's only one of hundreds of star athletes, Dan O'Brien. Dan O'Brien uh, was competing in the arena of, of track and other similar competitive uh, events on international level. And he was doing relatively well. But he want, had the ambition of appearing in the Olympics and in the decathlon, which means expertise and physical prowess and strength in ten different arenas. At best, he could work out one to two hours a day. That was inadequate to develop the skills and the muscular prowess. Our company got to turn them on to just three little things. Blue-green algae out of the Klamath Falls, which was enzymatically active. They turned them on to digestive enzymes to support the consumption of whatever he was eating and also probiotics to maximize the internal conditions along the gastrointestinal tract. In a healthy individual, you have 20 to 100 times more friendly probiotic cells, these active microorganisms, than you have cells in your body. That is like 95% of your genetic, genetic material is of non-human origin, is basically probiotics within a system. They assure health, according to all the studies, countries that consume on a daily basis some form of fermented foods, whether it's sauerkraut, unheat treated miso, uh, kimchi, all kind of ferments. And those countries were noted for low incidence of infant mortality, degenerative diseases were low, and high longevity. That's what we really want. Youthfulness at 60, 80 years of age. And we're moving toward a culture where the, the mid-age crisis might not be occurring until you're 95. But that means radical alteration, not only of dietary habits and consuming low-protein, 
dietary orientation in a pre-digested form. When you heat treat it, and this is what is being advocated by the professional, I document in all kind of nutritional and medical studies, a, up to 85%, 90% of the protein is disorganized and it's not recognized by your digestive enzymes and not converted into amino acids. As long as it is in a in completely metabolized protein state, it is an allergen, it's like free radicals attacking your system. We advocate pre-digested protein. All of a sudden, we are actually, in terms of the volume of amino acid creation in our blood, we're doing it 10 times more than those that are consuming heat-treated protein-based, animal protein-based dietary because it's totally disorganized, it's not bioavailable. I mean, come on stupid, wake up! And as far as intellectual development, give you an example, studies, and you can find all this, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Bruno, he's got over 300 medical journal organized, you can find it on the internet, studies. In particular, in Nicaragua, they took 2,000 children with the lowest academic performance in Nicaragua, and they put them on Primarily on a half a teaspoon of blue-green algae twice a day. Within one school year, they became the top school in the country, going up by two and a half grades. Are you hearing it? It's green, fools! The greens increase your red blood cell production, your hemoglobin, which means more oxygen will be transported. The Green food is alkaline. It means that you have a higher electro voltage potential neurological for operation of your brain system, not on the acid dead foods. We see you can find also ADD, ADHD being addressed with again blue green algae. My own grandmother, enzymes, little cayenne for circulation in a capsule, a mild herbal laxative, and blue-green algae. In five weeks from, according to the doctor, she was going to be bedridden for the rest of her life she, and with Alzheimer's disease. I gave her these just four different supplements. In five weeks the woman was out of bed, participating in the family life for another three years because she didn't want to make lifestyle changes, but she was able to be fully active mentally, very alive until she faded because of the toxemia associated with the kind of foods that she decided to eat. And everybody should have the choice to eat. If they want to eat suicidal foods that are going to kill you prematurely, it's your choice. Do it. We keep getting recycled anyway. It's reincarnated. We're reborn and, you know, an exit role is nothing. Someday you're going to go beyond being dumb and you're going to evolve into moving into the most powerful foods. They'll give you physical proudness of a bull, of a stallion, the speed of a deer that's breaking without any training, the two-minute mile. That's all within the reach of the raw athlete. Now, uh, with regards to blood, I'm wondering if you resonate with uh, the research and findings on blood uh, type diets that are based on an awareness of our point in evolution that blood type was developed, um, uh, you know, at certain points and, and time. Uh, that is, again, uh, a bit of hogwash uh, from the point of view that it is not the blood typing that is creating uh, the improvements in overall health, it's the fact that they have associated with every one of the uh, blood types certain lifestyle activities. If you do all those lifestyle activities, you're going to be improving yourself and even though you might be eating meat, you will have consuming now better quality meat, more balanced eating into an exercise routine and into better attitude modification. This is all being advocated as lifestyle shifts that you should be doing for each one of the blood types. I know so many people who are type O blood and they are raw vegan athletes, bodybuilders. So basically that that has no science behind it and so it was the an interesting for them to be a meat eater is not there's not no foundation okay. uh, for it whatsoever there's no science there's no uh, anecdotal studies are very weak and ambiguous and it's like another thrifty trendy th uh, thing that will be gone into the past history of garbage books okay 
Well, then, Victorious, I, I, I know you mentioned you sort of psychically picked up on my next question being about Bill Clinton. I know you spent a number of years in Arkansas, so of course you would take notice of uh, Bill Clinton's uh, dietary uh, changes in recent years. So in 2010, after his cardiac surgery, Mr. Bill Clinton adopted a more of a plant-based diet based on Dean Ornish's, T. Colin Campbell's, and Caldwell Estelin's recommendations. Mm -hmm. So judging by his behavior since becoming a vegan, other than his overall you know, health that we've noticed and, and weight loss, have you noticed a, a consciousness shift as, a reflect, uh, as, a, as reflected by his energy field at all? Well, the consciousness is an automatically reflecting of the vital force within. So there's a good reason why the standard American diet is called the sad diet. It's almost boom, it stays right in front of you. And we're all on all these prescription happy pills in, and enable you at least to function in the world. The whole concept of when you change your nutrition to a vegan, which means you're going to be moving toward more alkaline, the more alkaline you are, the more you are activating not only the power of your muscles, but also the neurological power to start integrating larger dimension of your brain. And when you start moving into better usage of your brain, uh, then you are basically moving into consciousness shift. And the brain is totally dependent on oxygen, electrovoltage potential, and precursors to the neuropeptides that facilitates the flow of thought, which are small chain amino acids, which are found in the green foods, especially in the blue-green algae that I mentioned. So with that kind of a shift, uh, more so you will experience increased in holism, increased awareness and sensitivity to things that are occurring. Matter of fact, your intuitiveness will start increasing. You will start, you know, you're picking up the phone and you don't say, who is this? No, it says, hello, Betty, how are you? Because you're already on such a high level of ESP. Matter of fact, we're moving to a time, according to psychics and also uh, mystics, that a time has come, and according to numerologists, time has come of one mind. We will be sharing one level of consciousness, just like we have trillions of cells coordinated and communicating in this limited body. We will have all bodies connected to one another, and we will move to an era from basically competition to cooperation. Wars will be totally out, and that means there will be no more meat eaters because as long as there is ongoing meat consumption, then you're consuming the fear of the slaughtered animal, and you cannot trust anybody because you have that fear of the slaughtered animal that went into the slaughterhouse and was emitting adrenaline, as, 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 emitting pituitary glandular stress factors that are not destroyed in the process of he heating, and you are consuming it, and it alters your brain chemistry. Just for instance, you can take the blood, uh, draw out some blood out of a schizophrenia and inject it to someone of the same blood type and sure enough, right then and there he go, they go schizophrenia. It's in the blood, buddy. And it's in the blood that makes you a little crazy until your own body detoxifies it. This is why they have used in Moscow Psychiatric Institute and you can see the exact studies reference it, uh, it and it was done published in Schizophrenia Review, they treated all forms of mental disorders with primarily exercise, fasting, liquid program, and vegan diet. It alters your state of conscious. Remove those fear complexes that you're integrating. All of a sudden, you are fearless. You don't have negativity. Uh, you all of a sudden start aspiring because you're utilizing more and more of that divine crown that you have in your body for successfully accomplishing your mission on planet Earth in this incarnation. So Bill Clinton uh, gives hope to all politicians and let's hope that uh, the elimination of the New World Order tactics Well I'll just share with you what's <laughs> I'll just share with you what's going on in Costa Rica. I mean they've done their share of drugs, sex, alcohol, rock and roll, and all that kind of stuff. And you know the new fad is? Yes, and a new trend. It's more than a fad, it's a trend. And basically, 
detoxification, cleansing, vegan diet, and spirituality and holism. Even the president, la, la, previous president came in to my friend's clinic in a, in a helicopter and other times in a uh, limo with uh, a whole range of guards for colonic irrigation. Matter of fact, the whole staff was getting colonic irrigation. <laughs> and, you know, this is called progressive thinking on the part of politicians. If you are constipated, you think your brain is working in a holistic way? If you're in a fear mode, can you think anything beyond your limited personal needs instead of thinking, what is it going to look like for the next five, ten years? Is our lifestyle sustainable? UN has stated in the Department of Food and Nutrition, after extensive studies, it states that as far as, as, far as our sustainability of our environment, the greenhouse effect, the greenhouse gases emissions that is taking place, majority of us do not to do our trucking industry and transportation. It, it's the production and consumption of animal protein. We are making this spaceship planet Earth that is circular around the planet unsustainable by our lifestyle habits. Wake up America, wake up planet. You got to go vegan, then, and if you go also vegan, and you go raw, then you provide 100 times more nutrition from the same acreage of land. You don't have to be concerned about our inability to supply the nutrients. We're supplying it in the most efficient possible fashion with creating also the maximum effect on the human body, moving into a state of peace, creativity, at one man, universal values start evolving and we start channeling the energy of love, which is what the great all master said, love yourself and love others, but people just don't love themselves because they are filled with disorganized mental thoughts about themselves, about the judgments and all that negativity they receive from past Yet, through fasting, you can clean out the bloodstream of all this negativity through green juices. Nowadays, it's far better than just water fasting. And your mind becomes clearer and sharper, more focused and more peaceful and more productive. And when you integrate all of this with meditation, the TM study showed that whatever you do, whatever kind of activity you might be involved in order to be an achievement and to maximize your abilities, you'll meditate. Whatever you do, it will make it, enable you to do it better. And we see it now in the commercial world, in many of the corporate offices, meditation is encouraged. As well. Boy, if we got uh, everyone in the White House to meditate, wouldn't this uh, <laughs> well, be a to, whole new reality in the United States? All we need States. is 10% for critical mass. 10%? That's right. all. You okay. don't need to have everyone then the rest of them will fall into, uh, fall into place. But 10% of it, that's all that's needed. Great. Well, uh, while we're on the subject of politics, before we get back to that beautiful point that you made with regards to our evolution and where we're going, um, I, I'd like to just uh, speak for a moment on the Obama administration. Obama announced some key administration post changes in 2011 with the addition of Dean Ornish and other related experts in the field of health to what's called the Advisory Group on Prevention, Health, promotion and integrative and public health. Do you honestly feel the recent legislation under the current administration addresses the cause or prevention of disease in 2012 more than it did in 2011 and before this new advisory board was set in motion? It all depends on what level of platform that Dean Ornish is going to be placed. If he's going to be sitting in the background trying to encourage and make all kind of political changes, in no way there's going to be much change, but it's a very positive attribute, just as positive as having Michael Beckwith in his previous uh, celebration, a great not only vegan, raw foodist, spiritual master, uh, that his choir performed, uh, I think, three or so recitals during the celebration of his winning of the pre previous presidency. He's certainly is surrounded by the right kind of individuals, and it's a matter how much what roles will they play in terms of in creating influence? Remember, we have major 
dairy meat lobby that is inculcating our children that we need to be consuming so much milk, which is the number one cause of all degenerative diseases, consumption of pasteurized milk. Go to the website www.notmilk, not milk.com, and you'll see, you know, what a deadly elixir of it's pasteurized. And then if it was raw milk, it's totally another issue altogether. Your body not only can tel tolerate, but it can also get some benefit. But you don't have the need for milk. We see it also now in the milk industry, it's the liquid elixirs called, you know, rice milk, uh, almond milk, soy milk, all these are coming into being. But even better ones are the ones you make at home by soaking your sunflower overnight, soaking your almonds overnight, blending it to a cream with water, squeeze out that liquid, and you got high protein, alkalizing milk being made available to your children. And of course, uh, a local health expert and advocate, uh, Karen, uh, has a book called Soak Your Nuts. So go pick up a copy of Soak Your Nuts at uh, your local whole, uh, whole Foods. Absolutely. Um, Thank so, you for mentioning Yeah, it. absolutely. I love the title, Soak Your Nuts. It's the best. Um, uh, that being said, I want to I want to know if you have any comments with regards to Obamacare, whether it actually addresses the issues in our health system you feel needs to be addressed. Uh, Obamacare is going to have an impact, probably more, adding more cost uh, to our economy with that particular gesture and possibly even less care. Until Obamacare becomes what the late President Johnson, when he stepped on the plate and he delivered a message on the health of the nation, he almost flipped over because he read that report for the first time. In it, it said, according to the expert, 65% of Americans who are sick with incurable disease, 25% of the children. That was a long time ago, many generations ago, the condition. It has not gotten better. It's gotten worse in terms of morbid obesity, degeneration, etc. So he said to, and we were like 40th nation in terms of health in the world, and he thought we were the healthiest nation in the world. So he said to the Surgeon General, go out and find out why we got problems. Ten years later comes back the Surgeon General Report. And to make sure you don't miss the essential critical information, they put it right in the introduction. As far as wellness and health is concerned, it stated, do not expect any help from your traditional medical doctors, from hospitals, or from any scientific breakthrough. It said, the whole issue of wellness and health resides on five basic principles. That whole is a model that I taught. Improvement of your nutrition, exercise, your attitude, the amount of rest you get, and the degree of environmental pollution that you are subject, as well as cigarette smoke. You improve these modules, and all of a sudden, you are going to be healthier. So, Obamacare should be the teaching of the five basic principles, and he's going to be able to reduce the whole health care issue, just like the previous governor said from Arkansas, the hell with health care, let's get healthy. And that's the whole issue. Get healthy by introducing and teaching the five basic principles that are consistent with what Dean Ornish is teaching in the PCRM.org. And this is what we all can do. It's the job of the politicians to bring these sacred truths to the public. They are not doing it. Now, and furthermore, uh, the next question I'd like to ask you is about this particular document called the Codex Alimentarius, which I picked up uh, at the Health Freedom Expo recently here in Chicago in June. Um, and it's an essential part of becoming a member of the National Health Federation. Can you tell us why this is important to know about? This also says global food imperialism. Well, yeah, I, I, in Costa Rica, I stopped at uh, the local grocery store and I picked up Twinkies. <laughs> And I'm reading, while I'm waiting in line, you know, instead of reading National Enquirer, I'm reading a Twinkies label, and it says approved by this codex as a, as a, as a food that ha is within their standards. This is the kind of standards that is being advocated. Food that is processed dead, that has a shelf life of a thousand years. Is that what you want to be eating, putting it into your body? I don't think so. They, of course, endorse and approve genetically modified food, processed foods, dead foods. The whole intention of this whole thing is accelerate the depopulation process. 
which is being initiated by whether you look at the chlorination, the fluoridation, the chemtrails that are in the air, all of it are out to impact, uh, accelerated the radical depopulation that is being propagated without war. Now I'd like to shift gears. Thank You've you. got to make your own choices. Nobody else is going to provide the answers. And the whole idea of sustainability, living on the limited environment within which you have. We are born of nature and we are natural nature, wildlife needing individuals, life forms. And as long as we stay away from nature in our concrete block homes and away from clean air, sunshine, fresh, fresh water, you're just going to decay and decompose and be recycled by the microbial maggot world. But you can do a lot in your own home. That's what my teacher, Reverend Ann Wigmore, that's what Hippocrates Health Institute, this is our mission, is to bring the holistic lifestyles that are totally doable within your own personal home environment so you can recover from degenerative diseases at pennies a day, well, it might be a uh, hundred pennies a day, through the process of growing the grasses of Nebuchadnezzar, who we all heard of him in the Bible, who was sick mentally and physically, ate grasses, and he overcame all these conditions. Uh, following the teachings of the ministry of the Essenes, who were rediscovered, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, that was their original writing, historian Josephus said they lived on the average 400% longer. The average age was over 125 years of age, whereas the average age for Mediterranean, for Northern Africa, for Southern Europe was around 35. They lived on a vegan, enzymatically active, plant-based diet with a whole emphasis on germinated seeds, the sprouted seeds, the baby greens, the immature plants, which have the highest energy, most bioavailable nutrient profile. As a result, you need very little. And also, they're alkaline. If you are on an acid-oriented diet, your cells are dying off rapidly. Dr. Creole, a Nobel Prize recipient, said the ultimate cause of all cellular death is acidity. You are consuming in your elixirs. Everything that you consume is, is acid. Your colas, your cooked foods, your processed foods, they're all acidifying on your system. The only thing that is alkaline is the raw greens and the alkaline sweet fruit as well as water is helping to flush out acids out of your system. Most people are severely dehydrated and then they drink the chlorinated, fluoridated water which is making your brains go stupid and also at the same time the intestinal tract, they, it, it, it has an antibiotic effect killing off all the friendly bacteria. It's not what you want in your life. But there's ways that you can do all this in a right fashion in your own home in a cost-effective way, you can buy all the tools you need within the internet, even within Walmart. I mean, they got cheap, inexpensive juicers, they got inexpensive blenders that allow you to use them to create very delicious food so that it can be done by anybody. And then you can sprout so simply. Just visit me on, on, on YouTube. We have free ways to show you how to sprout utilizing the paint strainer bags, which are nylon meshes, at any paint store or lumber yard or hardware store. You use them and it takes only a few minutes a day. You can grow from one pound of seeds, ten pounds of sprouts, and they keep very well in a refrigerator. So there's, there is solutions. Do not panic. You just got to make the right kind of cho choices in your life. Or you visit a place like Veggie Fest, uh, where I was a couple weeks ago at the Signs of Spirituality down in Naperville, and uh, I saw the Sprout Man there, and they had beautiful sprouts growing out of a bag. Very easy and simple to do. Um, so much like your own book, uh, uh, Victoria's Survival into the 21st Century, a generation has passed since Dr. Gabriel Cousins wrote Spiritual Nutrition and the Rainbow Diet, in which he wrote the preface. 
Uh, the modern printing, in which I have here with me today, Spiritual Nutrition, uh, Six Foundations for Spiritual Life and the Awakening of Kundalini, also includes your preface, of which I would like to highlight here and have you elaborate on the spiritual and nutritional frontiers we are foraging. Um, I love when you say in this book um, uh, that, uh, 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 you know, it helps, that, that this book helps Mother Earth detox into the world of tomorrow, which is being created in the hearts and minds of the ones who are at one or atonement, at one I am that. You also go on to say regarding uh, uh, the book, it is like having a conversation with God over a glass of wheatgrass juice. Love that quote. This is essentially the metaphor I'd like to delve into as it seems to have the keys to the whole concept of spiritual nutrition. And as an energy therapist, uh, um, I'm most intrigued with how this relates to the chakras and raising our consciousness through what we eat and take into our bodies. You've certainly laid out all the foods. I'd like to talk a little bit, have you talk a little bit more about that and perhaps you can discuss briefly the model of subtle organizing energy fields or SOEFs. Mm -hmm. And I'll just show a uh, photo here that has uh, uh, the, um, uh, the chakras. And in fact, in Survival into the 21st Century, you were one of the first ones to include chakras in your book over 35 years ago, and there weren't even, you know, the, the amount of sh books on chakras that there are today. Mm, well, thank you. Yeah. Uh so again, with regards to nutrition and raising consciousness and how it affects the aura and the energy field. The more still is the your energy, the more quicker will you evolve in intellectual and spiritual consciousness. In Bhagavad Gita, it states that a person, they have three dietary levels. The saints had the fourth one, the, which was biogenic. The Bhagavad Gita, they talk about sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. The tamasic is basically a diet of cooked and overcooked food. And it states in it, I mean, that's thousands of years ago, it states such individuals are unsuited for spiritual and intellectual work. The energy is totally stuck in the stomach, in the digestive process, it does not rise into the heart or the throat or the consciousness. Basically, such individuals are relatively robotic. Though temporarily you can transcend when you are abstaining or under an influence of a cup of coffee or some other kind of stimulant or marijuana. You can access a much higher levels of awareness and that all has to do with alkalinity and versus alkaloids. On a vegan diet, you are on an alkalizing, alkaline diet. On a tamasic, acidic diet, you are acidifying, and if you reach for certain elixirs that have ability to, inc uh, to neutralize the acid components that are circulating in your system, that does make you temporarily alkaline. Whether it's nicotine, caffeine, cocaine, or marijuana, any of these things can do that. And what we saw is a major revolution take place three generations or so ago when marijuana became popular in the culture which was evolving out of the president and like ours are promising all kind of things. He promised us a car in every garage and chicken in every pot. Well, the kids forgot about the chicken and they got into the pot. And what we had was a major revolution. To, the anti-war movement took place. Pro-life, in other words, became activated. The idea of killing anything, animals or humans, was a no-no when your consciousness has evolved. Because, and that temporarily evolves it. It evolves them to leave the life of the city and communes were formed. It also led them to growing their own food. And when you're growing your food and eating in the garden, that alkaline food, it's starting to alkalize. And the more alkalizing you got, the more high you got without relying on that marijuana weed. Matter of fact, what started happening, you became so alkalized and so conscious that if you took that marijuana, you pushed yourself into extreme alkalosis and you had a bummer trip.
No more uh, uh, glorious hyperspace adventures. Now all of a sudden, you're, you're wasted. Alkalosis, just like acidosis is also physical extremity. So you got that subtle small energy area within which that you need to stay to, for optimal alkalizing. So on a vegan diet, you can alkalize yourself, increase your electro voltage potential for your brain so the brain becomes integrated and functioning on a much, much higher level of awareness. And what is considered holistic, sustainable, and universal instead of just involved in strategies for basically security, trying to survive from day to day. When you are on an alkaline diet, you know you're taken care of. There's nothing that can trouble you. Just like good example in the Bible was Daniel, Daniel and his friends who were uh, kind of uh, pushed into the direction of eating king's meat. And uh, they asked, they begged the king, says, give us 10 days to live on our diet of, 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 uh, of, of, uh, uh, of legumes. And uh, if we prove to be not as vital as your athletes and your astrologers and your wise men, we will do what you require. And after 10 days on pulses, which were just soaked legumes like lentils, mung beans, it proved to the king that they were wiser than the wisest sages that he had in his courts in terms of addressing any of whether it was political or astrological issues. They were stronger, healthier. Their composure was youthful, alive, much more vital than what was done by the animal protein diet. So it allowed them to live on. Then they got kind of not happy with them because of political intrigue. So they decided to throw them into the, into the ovens and roast them. What did they do? They danced and celebrated in the ovens. You'd say, well, that is not possible. That's not my reality. Well, yes, please, uh, Victorus, continue with uh, what you were saying as we were... Uh, okay, Tony Robbins uh, has, and I participated not only with Tom Robbins and many others, uh, doing fire walking, fire dancing on charcoals, 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, not an ouch, not a burn, not a sad face, no one got toasted. As Yet I. it's all consciousness. <laughs> it's all consciousness, including also even during the uh, Hiroshima issue when it happened in Hiroshima. There was a there was Franciscan monastery, and within the zone of destruction, and they had no radi radiation radar burns. It was consciousness. They did not accept the reality of what was occurring. Do you accept the reality? I poured one time boiling water on my hand by accident. I didn't accept. In a flash of a second, I had to make a choice. And I made the choice that this is not real. It's not happening. And no burns, nothing like that. You can make such phenomenal uh, lifestyle choices. And that included when Union Carbide in, I believe, 85 in India, ex uh, their factory exploded, was spreading like crazy. Uh, with all the fumes and gases, some people ran into their home and did fire ceremonies because they believe it's the belief system and they were not affected. Others were dying from these chemicals. They were not affected. It's your consciousness that has the most dramatic effect, namely your belief system. So that can have a dramatic influence on the overall outcome. If we have 10% critical mass on planet Earth, developing higher level consciousness, we will have the rest of the 90% of survivalists coming into alliance and coherent force field will overrule where we will have the world of sustainability, peace, and the new future that will evolve, not based on the competition for resources and food area, uh, food growing regions. No, because these things are not hard to take care of. No, instead the whole future will reside in expressing our unified mission. And I mean it, unified mission. We are meant to be at one this particular period of time in history and we're all important and it's us to 
contribute and come from our own area of expertise and specialty and evolutionary consciousness that we came here to be part of the clockwork, to make the clock tick in a, such a fashion that will give you timeless bliss. You know, Reverend Victorious, you also say it's, it's a, uh, a blueprint, um, uh, this particular book, for creating the critical mass of conscious people necessary for the planetary transformation into a peaceful, loving, humanistic world. And as an energy therapist, I tell all my clients who's have, who are having their auras and chakras reconstructed that we're preparing ourselves to transcend from power struggle of the third chakra into the heart chakra and essentially going through the eye of the needle, if you will. Since the vibrations of the higher chakras are less dense, do you feel that the plant-based diet at this point in our evolution is more necessary than ever before because of the heightened and lighter energy it's necessary well, that in our comes, overall diet and system? Well, that comes back to, again, the, the teachings in Ayurvedic medicine and also the Bhagavad Gita. So you had, you had basically the lower energy for just to stay alive to 35, 40 years of age, uh, type of a dietary, which is basically the cooked and overcooked foods. Then you have the next uh, rajasic dietary approach, which is more like energy. It's sad to say it's the rajasic energy of both animal protein, chaotic, not very driven by the consciousness. Sattvic diet, which was the third level, that's the one of the eating the food as created by the cosmos in a perfect form of the interreaction between the sun energetics and the earth energetics and giving you a harvest of greens, a harvest of uh, fruit that is perfectly ripened from the tree instead of picked away prematurely and it acidifies your own body. So this is the sattvic diet. It, it's the diet of spirituality, the diet of consciousness. And the diet next with that was what was found in the Essenes, in the, basically the fourth state, was basically biogenic, which is basically food that is, has the highest level of aliveness so that your celery might be considered a mature plant, but if you took the celery seeds and you germinated and you ate the celery sprout, you are in a process of regenerating your body with a high vibration of the growth that is hormonal and somatically and providing the basic essential nutrients for the whole body rejuvenating into a younger, more vital, more alkaline, more cosmic profile so that now you can, by merely focusing on the chakras, you can bring them to life through the process of meditation and stillness so you can take that power chakra and not only energize it through like qigong exercises for instance if you imagine around your belly button you have a clock and you spin it in a clockwise direction you create such an increase of power on your system matter of fact metabolism increases because this is dealing with this energetic and you'll end up losing just do this 50 times around your belly button stroke a few times and repeat it one more time and do it twice a day according to qigong master you lose about two pounds of fat out of your system every week that's an easy thing to do and when you start spinning your heart chakra or working with special crystals and also through meditative focus now you increase the unconditional love the cornucopia, the experience of divine love going beyond your personal needs and finding yourself at one with all and feeling the joy of group love. And then the next, if you bring that energy still further up into the throat chakra, the blue area, this is where the energetics of mental concentration, creativity, focus, expansion takes place. So you dive into that arena and it's like walking into the intergalactic art museum and the symphony hall that is blaring blasting with the most exotic ecstatic ex life experience you think you'd be able to take it down but you know the script only could be co coded by guys like mozart you know mm -hmm. but you might not be able to take it but my god you visit those spaces and then if you are fortunate enough to take it to the crown chakra, then now you're entering into the eternal, timeless world of total knowledge, total wisdom, God empowerment. I 
didn't know about nutrition, but in the days of college and high school, I already was experimenting with by purely accidental moving into what is called meditation later on to be discovered. But I went from an academically challenged individual to becoming one of the top students, winning three awards in high school, uh, whereas I was held back three years in grammar school because of my intellectual disadvantages. And it all came down to discovering that I do not eat anymore during exam times because I didn't know why, but I found my brain much clearer. And the reason for why is I was eating all this greasy food, rich foods, like most people eat fast foods, and it causes red blood cells to clump together. They're not delivering oxygen. It was an acid-oriented diet. As a result, I had no electrovoltage, but by just drinking water, I found myself now, my blood was circulating, oxygen was delivering to the brain, and then staying away from other belief systems. I believed in my superior knowledge. I believed that everything is possible. I believed that whole message in the Bible, it says, knock and it shall be answered. Ask and it shall be given. In other words, everything is accessible. It all depends on level of belief. So I entered into places of stillness and mindlessness where I had no negativity, only positivity. I could, it might take two, three days to get there, but I was downloading questions. I'd read the questions and do automatic writing, write out, you know, three, four page dissertations in theoretical mathematics or psychology or English literature. Just totally perfect forms. And the teachers couldn't figure out, how the heck was this guy doing? He was cheating. Of course, I use cosmic cheating. And uh, this is uh, accessible <laughs> to all. You know, to that. learn how to have access to total knowledge. This is available to all. But meditation is the entry, and clean blood is the pathway of building that organism that enables you to access that cosmic information. As long as you're filled with sludge, dirt, built, you know, grease, Enzymeless nutrition, your brain is that of not even a human consciousness being. You are totally tamasic, not aware. And anybody can do it, it doesn't matter. I've done it, I've been at the base, and I've been at the top, and I've been even a bulimic for 10 years. I managed to even get around, get through that. I've been there where you have been, but you got to just keep on believing yourself, keep on trying, keep on learning what is the best, and keep forgiving yourself, and move on. Just keep trying. The next day will be a better day, and it will be. And, and again, as we're, we're here in September of 2012, marching towards the December 21st, 2012 day, talking about moving up to the, the heart chakra, the fourth dimension, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, eating less, eating more of a plant-based diet, uh, just reiterating what, what you're saying, will help to, you know, shift our consciousness up to the, the lighter levels. I'd like to go a step further into Kundalini, and uh, you also say that what excites you in the book goes on to clarify the live food concept and how the processing of food affects consciousness, energy, and spiritual aspiration. Can you share briefly about your personal experiences of Kundalini after a long live uh, food fasting regimen? And is this also outlined in your book, uh, The Lover's Diet? Yes, quite a bit. Okay. Uh, though there's presently not too many copies in circulation. Survival is much more prevalent. But uh, primarily, uh, we all want to be, uh, it's called Lover's Diet, and basically all the great teachers say that to be a great lover is to love yourself and to love others as yourself. Most people do not love themselves. They, it's shown by their behavior, by their smells, uh, by the levels of uh, joy that they hold. Because if you are loving yourself, you will be quite happy. Loving yourself means taking your body out for a walk. Means Loving yourself means creating, hydrating your body. It means feeding it uh, foods that give it vitality instead of weakness. and. Uh, uh, and feeling wasted instead of pouring, putting a toxic alcohol and other poisons, whether it's caffeine or, or uh, drugs, into your system. This is all not loving your body. The whole idea is getting to become your body lovers. Then you'll have a strong tantric presence. Uh, one of my good friends, Bennett Luchon, a tantric priest for over 70 years, has lived uh, on a very unusual diet, but it was on sprouted grains and grasses. And the guy had two PhDs, one in 
biochemistry and other one in, in comparative religion, and he was also a choreographer and a tantric priest, which means he worked with the Kundalini energy in intimate relationships as well as creating intimacy with yourself. That's You don't need to have another being in order to experience cosmic orgasm. You can experience the most divine bliss that blows your socks and circuits instead of having a temporary that endomorphian, that internal uh, uh, blast of uh, juicy, delicious uh, orgasm that stops at the solar plexus. But if you learn how to practice tantric uh, sexuality where you hold onto your semen instead of ejaculating. As soon as you ejaculate, you lost the power. You're just, this is where the Kundalini energy, the chakra energy is created and stored and through consciousness guiding, you can take that electrical force, the ionic state of prana and move it through your chakra system. And when you bring it to your heart, it's all the things that I talked about, or to your throat. And when you do it with your beloved, whether it's intimate encounter, an intercourse, or it is through yogic postures, uh, you will be able to, through the attributes of your mind control, take it through all the levels. And the hours and hours of joyful experience and rejuvenation that you will feel out of that encounter is phenomenal. So look into some different attitudes toward what we consider sexuality. Sexuality is a beautiful place to go to and it can be for sensuality, it can be for procreation or transformation. It's And it can be all of them, but it's a matter of seeing where you're going. So, learn how to play with this chakra energy and you'll be able to control it much more so on a vegan diet than you can on the overall short-lived lust of an animal-based protein type of a dietary orientation. At 75, I have more intimate moments, more kundalini energy than I did when I was eating at McDonald's. And I used to eat three times a day when I was in college, when that was just becoming prevalent. But when I started experiencing with vegan diet, the kundalini energy, the intimacies that went on, it led to the movement of this energetic field through your system and the experiences of visual auditory as well as fragrance it is beyond description either you've been there it's like eating an apple versus talking about an apple you want to eat the apple to know the apple that's likewise about chakra energy you do the practice you do basically your breathing exercises your locks your empowerment of your system but all this work is only centering on one thing bringing you into complete union of integration that's what yoga is all about it enables you to now not only transcend the limitations of your own body but you start extending yourself through your own example and interaction with the world and heightening the vibrational level and we are at a time in history when, you know, it's now, you're talking about the December 2012. According to a very uh, popular DVD called The 11th Hour Top Scientist, they're talking about the flares that will be emanating out of the sun will be so pronounced because it's already ex it's already the flares are developing more and more intensity, but it will be peaking in December of 2023. And it will have a destructive effect on our ionosphere. With the ionosphere, this organized radiation is going to be basking all of us. And you will be impacted in a very negative ways. However, there is a solution according to the work of Army and Navy, and I 
show it from radiation re review studies, animals that were fed green diet survive lethal dosages, deadly doses of radiation. So if you want to be able to thrive on that kind of energy, go green. If you're not greening yourself, then you're probably going to get radiation damage in your system. This is a transitory cycles. It's nothing new. Our whole cosmos, our solar system goes through cycles and cycles. We see more than just the day to night cycles moving around the sun cycles, but also we go through the, each one of the zodiac systems. And then also there is continuous evolutionary higher and higher spirals and there is a lot of repetitive action such as renewal of planet Earth through the process of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, earth changes, polar shifts, and there is loss of civilizations as has happened before, it will happen again, but the thing that you need to live with is that you are an eternal soul, changing vehicles from incarnation to incarnation, there is no death, there should be no fear of death, it should be a celebration, just like birth is a celebration, death should be a celebration of joyfulness, moving into all kind of wonderful dimensions of the cosmos, you are an eternal being and having a temporary transient experience in a physical body. Don't worry. <laughs> Be happy. A uh, good point to come to, uh, Reverend Victoris, um, since we're talking about sexuality connected to the second chakra, also creativity, and birth and uh, rebirthing ourselves as, as we will. Um, I, I, I'd like to think I'm, I'm one of those that with this interview focused on evolution, I'm creating a future for my daughter Angelina as we are all as parents creating for our sons and daughters and the generations being birthed into the world at this point in time. Um, and I'd love for you to elaborate on how you feel eating a more plant-based diet can be beneficial during pregnancy. Given my personal experience of preeclampsia during the latter part of my pregnancy, I was exposed to some confusing information that pointed to only eating meat as the answer to solving the issue of protein showing up in my urine. Uh, they seemed to be dissatisfied with my choices of doing plant-based protein or even uh, raw food, smoothies and drinks. Can you clear up what preeclampsia really is and how having a plant-based diet can prevent or solve this potentially life-threatening problem? Dr. Gabriel Cousins, an MD, he, just like myself, expounded the idea of preliminary cleansing and detoxification on the part of, of future uh, partners who are going to give birth to a, to a child so that if you cleanse and detoxify your body, you'll never have any preeclampsia. It's just an attempt on your body to detoxify even further, to eliminate toxins, so the child will be evolving and developing in as clean as environment as possible. Even with these considerations, just remember, the placenta, according to 2007 studies, the placenta of the average American has over 250 chemicals that have nothing to do with life. They are basically poisons. In the, in the blood itself. So the child is subject to a tremendous amount of very poor uh, environmental conditions. But as far as the infant's overall development during the, uh, uh, during the, uh, during the birthing stages and nutrition, there's an excellent book, uh, research book that was written by Dr. Bernard called Prenatal Origin of Genius. You can find it on the internet. And Bryce, they study uh, they studied over 200 geniuses and where were the characteristics that made all the difference with these individuals. And some of the th outstanding things was, first of all, it was a simple plant-based peasant diet, they call it, was conducive. Secondly, it was uh, being away from pollution and environmental toxins. They lived in a countryside. Three, it was the thoughts of the mother because it is the thoughts of mom that basically influences your thoughts become organic compounds and circulate and it ends up influencing the infant. So if the mother is involved in listening to concerts, uh, playing a violin, hanging out with musicians, you can be guaranteed that infant is going to be a musician. My own sister, my mother was involved in business. 
uh, and she was very commerce, 12, 16 hours a day. She was 42, I believe, when she gave birth to my sister, who's like 18 years older. Well, before she gave birth, I knew, I told my mom, I said, you're going to give birth to a daughter, and she's going to be an accountant. Sure enough, she's a certified public accountant, because my mother was totally dived into that kind of level of consciousness. With me, it was being involved in spirituality, consciousness uh, uh, type of exploration, and I have been directed into that kind of predisposition. So the mother has great influence, and of course, it is the overall time of birth. So your thoughts, not sitting in front of a you know, soapbox opera, operas, watching violence, watch, allowing your children to watch violent cartoons. Uh, this is a way of degrading, degenerating your consciousness and producing inferior offsprings. The diet of least toxemia, maximum amino acid presence profile in your system will be the raw based amino acid that comes from sprouted seeds, that come from soaks, nuts and seeds. These are your highest protein sources and they also have all the essential amino acids and also the essential uh, fatty acids to create superior brain development. When you add to it all the chlorophyll rich greens, you're going to have a fantastic healthy offspring. But cleansing and detoxification is a good direction. It's a good direction for women uh, to basically detox until they have uh, basically a very slight muco discharge instead of having those bloody hemorrhages they call menstruation. I, I spend many, many pages on the subject of menstruation and research and showing that basically it's the consequence of poor dietary choices. The healthier you are, the less will you have of a menstrual flow and basically, and yet you will be fertile. Uh, that, uh, all that being said, uh, can you uh, comment on, um, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, one of the fears I had going into uh, childbirth was uh, the fear of interventions in a hospital environment. And my uh, ideal plan was to obviously have a, um, uh, a, a home birth, but we were to be in a birthing center where there was uh, uh, a water-based um, uh, birthing uh, mm -hmm. a support system, as well as different yoga techniques and, and so forth. That being said, I had high blood pressure given my age and, and ended up having to be in a hospital environment. Mm -hmm. Can you say anything with regards to, um, uh, you know, interventions as far as that's concerned, and I think, uh, whether whether women should uh, focus on do, doing more natural versus an epidural, and how the drugs might affect the child after the fact. Well, you you want to have a drug-free birthing that's uh, self-evident, and follow up with a drug-free life instead of having 36 different forms of vaccinations just to get you into the school system. Stay at home, uh, get your church. Uh, uh, whether it's Christian Science or some other, uh, or your medical doctor assistance to get you out of the vaccination program. If you want to see how bad it is, just go to Mercola.com, and, and he's got all the documentation of the poisoning. So the less well, of course, Dr. Eisenstein, who does uh, is with Home First here, uh, uh, spoke at great length. That actually, his whole talk is just don't do it. That it's actually blood poisoning. Of course, it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're going to have to find ways to get around it if, as long as you live in the system and basically they will do everything possible to have you um, basically medicated, vaccinated and be a zombie-like individual, which is what the whole system is pushing on one level, though there is a consciousness level that is polarizing and people are evolving into ever higher consciousness due to the influence of the internet, which is acting for many of us as an educational tool for sharing a free university concept of uh, holism so that each individual has access to correct information. So uh, you as a, per as a person primarily work with your midwife, with your holistic medical doctors. Uh, there's many great uh, tools. I certainly am not the one uh, to uh, expound any particular practices outside of work with your best professionals and with minimal type of intervention, uh, optimizing your nutritional program, your oxidation, and also your breathing, and all of these are key. Remember, oxygen, alkalizing, uh, full spectrum of minerals that you get from eat, utilizing in your diet, seaweed, vegetables, as well as sea salt, 
and try to get highest quality in these kind of nutritional supports and then it's the green food and the amino acid profile and the essential fatty acids coming from soaked seeds and nuts and germinated seeds. So you do those kind of things, your body will continuously detox itself, keep on getting cleaner. A good idea is to do like three weeks of cleansing where you're on a very clean dietary with very, uh, you know, no nuts, seeds or avocados, so you're just eating plant-based diet with maybe some steamed vegetables occasionally and then uh, which will and plenty of hydration through fresh vegetable juices and water and herbal teas and then followed up by a, a little more concentrated program where it might involve some manna bread as seen, zeko bread, some cooked squashes and uh, soak, uh, soak season nuts, avocado so you'll put your weight back on and then you go back on a cleansing one and you keep on repeating this you know, month after month, and you keep getting healthier and more detoxified, and you'll see every month great improvement in your skin condition, your weight, your consciousness, your energy level, and eventually you'll see your iris go through changes. My iris was black with four stress rings, right now it's blue. They say irises don't change. Yes, they do change, and it has to do, it's a mirror. You can see the science of iridology. Just look up books on that subject. Your iris tells the condition of internally of your body. And uh, basically, Irish change uh, when it's uh, basically, if you're from the uh, basically Caucasian, uh, white uh, skin race, then it will become blue-green. And if you are from any other race, it will be, end up uh, becoming a clear, uh, a kind of mahogany, uh, light mahogany color without any demarcations so there won't be a bunch of black spots or color spots throughout your iris. But that's called cleansing and detoxification. It takes time and uh, basically you go on with your life. You don't concentrate, oh I'm doing all this. I carried on a very full rich life. I was busy all the time. I didn't, the nutrition was just a background. It's not my central role. It's something that you feed, try to eat in the best possible fashion and continue to educate yourself and move on. I mean, my, my work is, has been extensively involved in, in many, many different backgrounds. I worked as a college mathematics teacher. I worked as a, uh, in the computer industry for, uh, with Harvard, MIT, Smithsonian and all, Apollo projects and all that kind of stuff. I just, and now it's my interest has became biochemistry, evolution, consciousness, uh, the origin of the source, what a life is all about. You just keep on evolving. And food, less food, but highest quality vibrational food. In other words, make sure, emphasize on all your starches, fat, and protein being in a pre-digested form. Uh, so that it's easy on the digestive process and then you have all the micronutrients by way of enzymes, minerals, amino uno, acids, all of it coming in a maximum kind of configuration so that you are going to be always working as a healthy, happy camper with maximum energy, good athletic performance. Now, as far as uh, breastfeeding goes, do you feel that that uh, helps an infant up to a, a certain point, well, eliminating allergies and such? Well, you, you, allergies stem from, uh, uh, basically, they treat all forms of allergy, allergies through enzymatic saturation within two months, including gluten intolerance, which is altogether very common. Uh, and uh, by uh, e eating food that is enzymatically active, namely mother's breast milk, which is in a low protein, pre-digested form with the, all the essential amino acids, all the nutrients are there. Even and it's only regardless about regardless of what kind of a diet somebody's following, uh, breast milk is well, going to the be. child will reject it if it's a toxic diet. My mother was toxic. Within two weeks, I went uh, in, 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 ingest my mother's breast milk and she oh, stopped feeding wow. because she was emotionally very toxic and uh, uh, she was uh, in a difficult uh, uh, emotional state. So I stopped uh, uh, breastfeeding and uh, you see children rejecting mother's breast milk indication of toxemia. So um, uh, children are intuitively still knowledgeable. That's why when children are being fed all that beech nut and all cooked food and stuff like that, what do they do? They close their mouth. You have the most difficult time feeding. And, and then when you It's pour, pasteurized, correct? And, all the beech nut stuff? It's dead. It's yeah, cooked. It's dead. It's, uh, you know, otherwise, it wouldn't sit on shelves. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and uh, primarily, and then if you force it down, it vomits up. It throws up because it's still got the vital force of stomach to reject 
what is poisonous. Then eventually it becomes more and more acidified, doesn't have vitality to execute this muscular response. So now it passes out through the rest of the GI tract, which is still relatively alkaline. So you get diarrhea. Eventually that becomes over acidified. And now you start getting into slower and more sluggish evacuation. And now you're building up toxemia. You're getting all the skin conditions of childhood diseases. This is all unnatural. These things wouldn't be occurring. And they are not occurring within raw women who had detoxified themselves before in pregnancy and conception. Milk of mother's breast milk, like I said, it's low protein. It's around 1-2% protein, yet it provides all the essential amino acids during the period of most rapid growth and development. You don't need something 20% protein, beef and animals, in order to be able to be healthy. No, you need that kind of protein is in, or to, in order to become unhealthy and sick and move into degenerative diseases. Well, you bring up an important point which I'd like to sort of uh, uh, close on is, do you feel raising children on a raw plant-based diet is a good idea with their increased needs for protein? Protein. Well, yes, first of all, they don't have an increased need of protein. You'll be getting uh, the protein during the period of growth and development. You have the highest protein demands being placed as the body is going through rapid growth and development. And the body seems to be doing well on a 2% two, uh, two uh, 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 milk uh, solution of the mother's breast milk. So uh, the best uh, though proteins, and I, I've written about that subject for many contributions and adult stories from many women in uh, my book, Life in the 21st Century, which there is some circulatory copies. Uh, only 10,000 copies were printed of it. And uh, primarily that's survival in the 21st century and not life in the 21st century. And basically it's all the stories of women um, who had done extremely well on a raw food program. And I've seen the results. I mean, uh, children, first of all, on a raw food program are born with long earlobes, very large sized nostrils. These are indications of strong lungs and strong heart and earlobes are indications of strong liver and kidney. So these are far superior strong genetic type of children. Uh, whereas you see right now all the children being born they have no earlobes. According to Chinese physiognomy that means that is, they have a sensitive kidney and liver, and unless they're well taken care of nutritionally, uh, they will not be doing very well. They'll be just like the rest of the world population. By the time they're hitting mid-30s, they're suffering already from some chronic incurable disease, which is totally reversible by a lifestyle shift, a shift in consciousness moving into holism. It's totally up to yourself. Love you. Survival in the 21st century, uh, way before its time, you know, 35, 40 years ago, um, uh, you know, and as you said, it takes a full generation for people to transform. So, our, you know, we're probably at that point where we're ready to receive this more than ever before. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so you, can, you can pick up a copy of this at uh, Karen's Raw on Holstead if you're in Chicago. And you can go to the website www.survivalinthe21stcentury.com. And I would, I would uh, love and appreciate, as we're uh, wrapping up here, if you would uh, simply inscribe a dedication to all future generations, including uh, you know, my daughter, with regards to... And, yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Please visit me at victoras.org, also victorasretreats.com, where I conduct retreats uh, during the months of January right through July, and we have courses. They're usually eight days long of the most intensive saturation into detoxification, cleansing, and having fun. That's the, the most key thing. And being enlightened. Love you. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, we send Victorus off to uh, Lithuania now to do a dedication for Anne Wigmore. So we wish you well on your journey. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you.